Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. I'm here to bring you an interesting little tidbit, uh, something I discovered. Uh, someone mentioned it on the forums that you can directly input into a firing pin. Now, this allows for completely auto-loaderless cannons. This cannon's made up of about 10 parts, with no loaders, no clips, no nothing. And that's it. That's it, the entire cannon. Now, this little system has some interesting advantages and some drawbacks. First off, the big advantage is... Well, there's, there's no loaders. It's a tiny cannon. There's absolutely nothing to it. You can see that uh, design there in the background is one firing pin, one mantlet, a couple of barrels, and an input. That's it. Nothing more. It's a really interesting concept for making very, very, very small guns. Now, the drawbacks. Um, the biggest problem with these weapons is because there is no ammo buffer storage at all, there's nothing at all, whenever this ticks to load the clip, if there is something in the chamber it cannot put the extra shell anywhere, so we are limited to having only one shell in the cannon at a time, or like per firing pin, and we're also limited to the time to pass shell to ammo clip instead of the reload time. Now this is set to 400, this is like a 120mm cannon. Well, the main example is, and for this guy, we would expect a reload time of 4.51, but you actually have to go on this time to pass ammo to clip time. Because there is no uh, buffer storage, like I say, the shell is going straight from the shell customizer and going directly into the chamber and then being fired. So it's a really cool idea, and I'll show you a couple examples in a minute, um, but with one other advantage with these is the infrastructure is typically extremely small. I mean, this sh this cannon here, this particular shell needs 5.57 ammo parts, and it's a four-block shell, and that's the extent of what it needs. That's all of the back line, and that's all of the front line. Now, with the lowered fire rate, these things are a little bit nerfed. They're going to half their DPS compared to a cannon with an auto loader. But you can do some really interesting builds with them. Let's move over to the first example I put together here. This is just very simple minimum gauge stacks of firing pins all bolted together. And if I go and get my character, and we can go and fire it. Get the UI on so I can see what I'm doing. Bang! Right, you see you get two shots straight away. That's because of the offset on the timer. Now we're at our proper firing rate. In uh, the first two shells, what happens is if there's one chambered and then the auto or the ammo input is halfway through its reload cycle, it'll fire the first shell and then it'll only have half the time before it reloads and fires the next one. So as long as your barrel cooldown is low enough, it works quite well. I find that these cannons, or this type of cannon in particular, is better kept at a lower gauge because of that high reload time, although there's nothing to stop you going for the double. At the end of the day, it is twice as much, so, you know, you've got half the DPS you normally would if you had one autoloader. Another advantage with this, though, is because I'm not using any autoloaders, I can cram them together really, really close, and I'm stuck. Who knows? Blast. Okay, you're going to have to fall there, son. Get you back in a minute. Because they're right next to each other, if I was to build a bunch of autoloaders on the back of this, they would all attach to each other. And you would end up with one, one firing pin with loads of loaders, and the rest of them having none. So with this input method, you don't have to worry about that. You can build these really super compact barrels and just spam the crap out of stuff. Another thing about these, because they're so small, they work very well on a two-axis turret. Now, I have another, I have a two-axis example there, and I'll show you that in a second, but I'll just show you the infrastructure for this guy. This is actually a little bit more ammo parts than I need. Uh, there's 80 here. It costs, because this is only a 60 millimeter cannon, it's 2.62 by nine, so it's actually quite a bit overkill on the amount of ammo parts I have there. So, yeah, you don't need nearly that many, but you just need that many loaders. So it's still a very, very small infrastructure for the amount of firepower we have here. Next up, you can see that ludicrous thing at the end. It's a very interesting uh, <laughs> little 
exploit with the system, but this is a, a 120mm variant. Now this is the same as this cannon here, only with, you know, a little armoured shell around it, and it's got six of them bolted together. I, I've used this, uh, I've tested this particular variant quite a bit, and it's very, very effective. Um, it's a lot of fun. Considering the size of it, it puts out quite a lot of hurt for such a small and compact weapon, and the back line, which is this one over here, is extremely compact, and, you know, you could fit something like this onto quite a small ship. Now, another problem with these is the... Getting the recoil down can be a real problem. Now, I don't think there's any recoil dampeners on this guy at all. So you do have to dedicate space to them, but because you're not going to be using too many gauges... Let's get the UI off so we can see what this is made of. It's just them all crammed together with the firing or input feeds on top. Um, we would have to put gauges all the way around, uh, around the outside, maybe top and bottom. You could stick them on the back here because we're using gauges. We just have to move stuff around and jigger it about a bit. But if you look at the recoil force, it's 11,000, 11 and a half, which is really quite high. And with these firing all together, you can get a significant recoil force whenever you're firing your cannons. But at the same time, don't put them on a smaller ship, but you can put loads of them on a larger ship. Well, I, I'm not kidding, loads of them. The infrastructure is absolutely tiny. So, you know, it, it, it's a potential way to keep the redundancy up. You know, uh, lots and lots of weapons is better than one big one. So with this system, you're also uh, having lots and lots of extra turrets, lots of extra barrels, plenty of redundancy. And another little benefit is because there's no autoloaders, they're not very explodey. They're only ever going to have a maximum of one shell in the chamber. Now, this can explode. Don't forget that shells in an advanced firing pin can explode. But overall, they're a much less explodey turret. And uh, it'll only take out the turret. It's not going to make a huge asshole in your deck like you would with uh, an autoloader variant of this same thing because of all the extra shells that have been clipped up. So it's another trade-off you can make. Now, finally, a very interesting tidbit with this. Because we are not using autoloaders, we don't have to put any shells into clips. Let's have a look at this particular shell for the cannon on the end. Now, this is a 500mm cannon, and notice the shell length. Oh look, I need a 12 meter loader. But hold on a second. Oh, wait, we have to come up. Moment of truth here. Come on, how'd you come? UI on. Somehow or other, we seem to have a shell in the chamber. With this system, because you're not using any auto loaders, you can direct input a 12, a 16 meter, a 20 meter shell into your barrel and fire it. And we get these absolutely, absurdly long shells. Now this is not in any way practical. The reload time, because it's doubled, is even more stupid than it normally is. I literally, when testing these, have sat and watched the screen for 15 minutes to try the really, really big shells, and it's painful. So I'm not going to show that thing shooting anything, I'm sorry, but... We'll look at the reload time for this particular variant is 153 seconds. That is nearly three minutes. And that's a real, a real pain. Now, at the same time, that can make things with that don't require a high refire rate, such as bombers, really effective. Because we don't have to worry about a fast refire. We want to have like a big heavy payload that does loads of damage in one hit and then we can scamper off and come back later with another one after it's reloaded. It means you can completely forego something like a four meter loader and use maybe this sort of design. You know, mounted vertically with a nice little array of bombs coming out with just the firing pins attached. So. I will leave you with that. I'm going to do a little bit of a montage of these cannons uh, shooting stuff up and, you know, having a little bit of fun with them. But I do hope you enjoy this little public service announcement, so to speak, of a really, really cool little 
tip for building cannons. I know it's not going to be effective in every scenario, you can obviously build a much much better cannon using loaders, but it does have some niche uses, which is really cool, and I think I'm actually going to be using this little technique in some of my builds in the future, because redundancy is a really powerful thing to consider in your ships, and I actually really like this 120 meter loader, or this, this mortar. I know I've used uh, pretty much all high explosive shells in this scenario, and there is a reason for that. With this design philosophy, you have to have a lot of barrels, and faster shells with more gunpowder require more barrels, and as such, you know, you're going to need to have a bigger, longer gun. So that's a significant cost increase, and obviously barrels are typically more vulnerable than other parts, so yeah, it's a... Uh, I like to use HE shells, slow mortars, uh, things with like, base bleeders and stuff like this. This is one powder with a base bleeder, and it does reasonable damage for what it is with a you know fairly good reload. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any likes, subs, or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys, and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy, and have a bloody good day.